tonight. From MetLife Stadium in New Jersey, it's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. As we'll see Baker Mayfield and the New York Giants taking on Josh Allen and the Houston Oilers. We are across the Hudson from Midtown Manhattan at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. This is the scene just before we came on air. This New York crowd fired up by the arrival of their G-men as they burst from the locker room. They're ready to go as the Giants get set to match up with their opponents. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you take a look. Tonight, from MetLife Stadium in New Jersey, it's Thursday Night Football on EA Sports. Mayfield and the New York Giants versus Josh Allen and the Houston Oilers. We welcome everybody to the Garden State. EA Sports coverage of the NFL finds us at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. This is the scene just before we came on air. This New York crowd fired up by the arrival of their G-men as they burst from the locker room. They're ready to go as the Giants get set to match up with their opponents. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you take a look at this Giants ball club. They come in losers of two straight, so they're trying to right the ship here a little bit. They're teetering a little bit, aren't they? And now things could really go south if they lose this game, so they understand the importance of playing well and stopping this streak. 
Taken in at the three. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. Commanding the offense will be the seventh overall pick of the 2018 draft. It's Josh Allen. He enjoyed watching that game tape, didn't you? Yeah, Last week's game. Yeah, good. Four I mean, touchdowns, one pick. Now, you were a little upset about the pick. I didn't know if you would play him this week or not <laughs> if you were the head coach. Hey, they got the win. They got the win, so you're going to give him another chance? give him another shot. All right. I think the ratio is pretty good. He'll try to eliminate the interception. He wants to keep that hot streak going, throwing touchdown passes. And meanwhile, Allen's throw going to be caught by Davis. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The numbers for Davis last week, he took out some anger, some apparent anger against that defense. The yards just kept going up and up and up. Yeah, he was just running up and down the field doing whatever he wanted. By the end of the game, he was seeing two, sometimes three defenders on every snap, yet he was still making play after play. It was like he was running routes versus air in practice. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They run the counter. It's Brown. And able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. Now after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. We'll get an update when we return to MetLife Stadium. On play action, Allen. And bringing it in, it's Davis. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. That's what we're used to seeing from him right there. Plays like that, why he's number four in the league in terms of receiving yardage. Able to make adjustments all along the way. Doesn't matter where he lines up, where he releases from. Working his way into the secondary, figures out defenses and finds weak spots in order to get open. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. Eluding the pressure right. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Josh Allen with a lucky number 13 touchdowns now on the year. And the Oilers drive it right down the field to score on their opening drive. Extra point by Bass, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. to the touchdown Bass to kick it away and he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25 so now here are the Giants as they'll get their first opportunity here they will be led out by the Heisman Trophy winner from 2018 from Oklahoma, Baker Mayfield. Coming off of a loss their last time out, I think he's just seeking to make a bigger impact on the game. He threw a touchdown pass, didn't throw an interception. I think he just wants to jump those numbers up in terms of flinging it around and letting his receivers get into the end zone. On first and ten, Mayfield. Pressure comes and down goes Baker Mayfield. It'll be a loss of 10, and it'll bring up second. Another try after the first down sack. Mayfield, and his throw here is incomplete. You definitely would like to hit on that one because now you've got a third and long showing up, and you just know defense is going to be getting after it. They are pinning their ears back, and they are coming. Sheds off the tackle, and he'll be stopped at the 27-yard line, well short of the first down marker. They get 12 yards back, but it still leads to a fourth and long. Here's Tommy Townsend on to punt. They punted three times in the loss last week as he sends this one away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. 
Let's go old school there. That's absolutely a great coffin corner punt. Someone's put some time in working on that, hasn't it? Seems he? like every year these guys get better and better. It's amazing how they can command that football through the air. Yeah, they used to actually practice with hula hoops where they place them and try and put them there. Now a lot of guys use barrels on the sidelines to try and put the football in one. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Here's a give to Brown. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Allen off the play fake. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And this a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. Now that's a good bounce back after giving up a touchdown on the opening drive. Just one first down per minute and then out. Obviously no loss of confidence with that defense, and now they get to turn it back to their offense. They'll try and run for it with Brown. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But I also like what the runner is giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Allen now looks to throw. Flush to his right. It's caught right side by Daniels. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Now on third and two, they're going to elect to throw with Allen. He finds his man complete. That's Daniels. I like the call on third and two. They were geared up to stop the run. I like the fact they just hit him quick. A little slant route. All about timing there, partner. Yeah, the timing, everything well executed. Denzel Ward, the number four pick in the 2018 draft, making the tackle from his corner spot. Another run for Brown on second down. And he's going to get this pretty close to the first down marker at the Giants' 38. After a gain of five, they'll wind up being about a length of the football short here on third down. Handing it off to Brown. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. 60 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. Allen on third. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. And the red zone precision is the watchword. If the throw's a little too early, too late, maybe off a little bit, going to be a good chance that any attempt is going to be a contested one, and that one falls incomplete. So Tyler Bass on now for the field goal. 
This one from 35 yards away. The kick by Bass is good. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So that one on target, and it adds to this first half lead. And maybe we're too early to worry too much about one score lead, two score lead, et cetera. But this is where you kind of start banking those points that come in helpful later on. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. So the Giants getting the football back here for their second drive. And they are losers of two straight coming into this Thursday night game. Is it more difficult, CD, when you take a losing streak into a quick turnaround game like this? It certainly is because you don't get time to work on the issues that you've had throughout the season that caused you to have the record that you're having. You can't really get those set. So now you're trying to minimize those and maximize what you've been doing well. And I remember a game recently where one of the assistant coaches said to the head coach, forget our running back rotation. This guy has a hot hand, and they rode him to a victory. Those are things you have to look out for in games like this. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. 10-0, our score. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half, as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. And that one going to come up short, low throw. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Here's Mayfield. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. A first down throw for Mayfield. And he's got his man on the out route. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Throwing Mayfield. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Thompson. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense. And guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle. You put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. And again, it's Mayfield. He's got it complete to Thompson. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. out of the gun Mayfield and he's gonna go down here a sack they push him back to the 34 that one will set him back nearly 10 yards here on first down of the sack so second and long you got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range now into a sea of defenders have intercepted picked off at the 14 and he is going to get this one back to the 20-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. So after the INT, it's Allen. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Denzel Ward, and they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked off inside the 10, and his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. 
The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And with a 10-0 lead, you figure they won't try to do anything foolish here. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. A gain of three, second down. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and CD in a minute. First, it's time to take a look at what we've got coming your way this weekend in the NFL. Some good games to look forward to in the early window, especially the one in Baltimore. A big one coming up for the Ravens as they'll square off against the New York Jets. More good stuff later in the afternoon, one being down in the desert, where it'll be the Cardinals at home in Glendale, taking on the Green Bay Packers. And then lastly, the nation gets a good one on Sunday night between the New England Patriots and what equates to be a very tough opponent. In the game you're watching, it was Josh Allen who was on target in that first half. His guys lead it by 10 as we send it back out to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Gentlemen. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Giants set to get the football, and they trail here as we get back underway in the second half. No run back here to begin the half, and we will start at the 25-yard line. The Giants about set to go to begin this third quarter, and right out of the gate they face what you think could be a pretty important drive. I would say so. You know, they're down two scores. That's not the end of the world. It wasn't the strongest of first halves, but for them to start clawing back, they've got to start putting a little pressure on that defense, start cutting into this deficit. You can't have three and outs and expect to get that done. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now second and four from the 31 to throw Mayfield. He finds his man complete. That's Brooks. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time you wait for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Some extra space following the display of power down just inside the 45. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Mayfield looks to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And Mayfield again with the interception, his third. Picked off down near the five. So it was a drive that had real promise here to begin the third quarter, but ultimately derailed by the INT. And that was the position you wanted to be in, coming out to start this third quarter, get a nice drive going, looking for the end zone. Possibly got a little bit too greedy right there. They defer to Brown to start the drive. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. They keep it on the ground. Again, it's Brown. And able to get it across the 20 before they get to it. 81 yards rushing now for the NFL leader coming into this ballgame. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. They give it to Brown, and he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. On second down now, it's Brown. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. On the handoff, 
This is Brown. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Here's Allen on first and 10. He finds his man complete. It's Daniels. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. They'll run on first down. Brown. And he's going to get this past the 50 and into giant territory. The last run got six. Now second and four. So they fake the handoff. Now Allen escaping the pressure right. And he'll just get rid of it. So, Charles, you look at this offense. So what a start to the season. Five wins without a loss. When do you think that you start believing that maybe you're in the midst of something special? Well, you and I both know every head coach never wants that thought to creep into a locker room. But the truth of the matter is, not quite at this time, because if we look at the Steelers in 2020, they're a great example. Remember, they started 11 and 0 then lost five of six and went out in the first round. But I think if you get toward mid-November, the Thanksgiving time frame, and you're still doing this, that's when things start to get real for a ball club. Throwing on first down is Allen. Oh, he's hit. He lost the football. Put it on the carpet. And the Giants have it. It's picked up. And his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. So potentially a turning point here in the third quarter as that swings the door back open just a bit. Yeah, they're still down two scores, but I do think we're at that point in the game where you're going to reach for the football whenever possible. You're going to hear the coaches scream from the sidelines, tackle him, second guy in, tackle the ball. Oh, throw left side to start out. That's complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Mayfield on first down. Throw left side taken in by Slayton. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now Mayfield. He's got Thompson here, complete. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. Well, the drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone. And he's got it. Touchdown, Giants. Darius Slayton, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Giants have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Point after, right down the middle. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Taken in at the three. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. Now, Charles, of course, you got to remember, last possession they fumbled, it led to a touchdown. One score game here, got to be careful. And this is where coaching and training really comes into play, doesn't it? What, is it? what does everyone say after an error? Next play, move on, next drive. That mantra has to come to the front. They've got to take care of business right here and act like the last series just didn't happen. From the 31, Allen. And Daniels has it over the middle. 
And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. On first down, Brown. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 107 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. Both teams working on short rest, but this has been one of the better Thursday night games we've seen as they come up here on first and 10. They go right back to the ground here in Brown, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Now the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive game, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. So it's our visitors with the football as we get you reset. They're looking at a fourth down now as they try to hold on to this lead for dear life. And try to push his way forward, but I think he's going to be short. And he is short. No dice for Sean McDermott and the offense. And the Giants are going to get the football back. Field. And he will find his man on the outside. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Now Mayfield. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Clock rolling as the Giants will hurry to the line. He's going to let it fly. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked off around the 41. And he's just across midfield and down at the 49-yard line. Now we've got a giant player here slow to get up after that last play. We'll get an update when we return to MetLife Stadium. They'll run on first down. Brown. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. Right back to Brown. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. They'll run on third down with Brown. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. The Giants going to burn their third and final timeout as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in quarter number four. On first down, it's Brown. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well because we've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. It happened in the NFL. The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. Well, Charles, the old saying, the old cliche, if you will, points at a premium, that certainly applied here, didn't it? And that almost felt like opened up a time capsule, didn't it? Old school football, low scoring, close game. What a way to finish it up. You loved it, didn't you? You I loved did. the defense. I certainly did. Brought back the images of the game of old. So for our visitors, they remain as hot as anyone, 6-0 and now through the first month and a half. And now they'll have a few extra days here before they face Miami next week. Meanwhile, for the Giants, the losses are piling up as they drop to 1-5 and five now. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week.